Hi everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. And before we get started, be sure that you have joined the exclusive Facebook group. It's a great place to get to meet other crafters, ask your questions. Plus, I post lots of like free stuff over there, free SVGs, free fonts, free things. That way you don't miss out on any of that because I know I love a good free file and I'm sure you do too. Now in today's video, well, I'm going to show you how to make these really fun portable games. Now with the holidays coming up, and I know we still got a little bit of time, so don't be a procrastinator, but these are fantastic to add to stockings or if you're going on a road trip or something for the holidays, make some of these and you're going to be able to keep your kids busy, even your teens or yourself busy with these because honestly, these games are fun for anybody. I'm going to show you how to make Hangman with this, but there's lots of other games you can do. There's the dot and block game. You can do tic-tac-toe on these. I spy or just come up with something else that you guys like to play but I made hangman and I'm going to show you how to design this from start to finish we're going to be using design space and you're going to be able to do this completely for free in design space so you won't need to have design space access at all I'm going to link everything that we're using for this down below that way you can get everything you need and make sure that you're going to have a successful project so let's get started I'm going to show you how to design this from start to finish. Honestly, I think other programs would be a little bit easier, but I want to show you how to do it in design space. It can absolutely be done. It's just a lot of steps. So what we're going to do first is create a template to use to design on top of. So we keep it within the size of our acrylic piece. I want to go to shapes because I'm just going to use a square and resize that to the size of our acrylic blank. To resize my square, I go up to the top under where it says size. I'm going to unclick this little guy so that it's open, that little lock. And it's 5 inches wide and 7 inches high for our acrylic square. Now you can change this over to a guide if you want, which just makes it a red outline. But I do find that guide to be a little annoying sometimes because it'll grab the guide instead of what you're trying to work on. So I'm going to leave it as a basic cut and I'm just going to change the color so that I can see what I'm doing. So let's make it like a purple. Now we need to make a few parts to this. So I'm gonna start with the top of it, which is gonna be our text. And we're gonna make it just say hangman. And you can use any style font that you want. Base it on you know the age of the kid. If you have an older kid, you could use a little bit more of a script font. It's really up to you and what you wanna do with it. I'm gonna use this aubergine because I just think it's super easy to read. I think it's easy to weed and, and work with in vinyl. So it's the one I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna size it down a bit. And again, you make it how big you want it. It's really up to you. And I'm gonna kind of stick it towards the top of our design. The next thing we'll do is we're gonna build the little stand for the little man. So this one is just gonna be done by using lines. So what I'm gonna do is open up my shapes and grab the line. Now it's gonna default this line to a score line, but I'm gonna change it to a basic cut. And then from here, we can use this to create our design. Now, the reason that I don't totally love using this one though, is look at how thin it is. So that's one option, but let me show you a better option than using the line. I'm gonna go into shapes again, and I'm gonna grab a square, and then I'm just gonna make the square my line. So I'm gonna unlock it again, and I'm gonna change the width to like 0.05 and see how we feel about that width. I think that's actually a really good width. So I wanna keep the width, but then I wanna change my height. And I'm gonna do like maybe three inches for this stick part. So this is where like the part's gonna come off of that'll hold the guy. I might go a little bit longer, but I think that that's probably pretty close, maybe 3.5. That's a little bit better, 3.5. Now what I'm gonna do is duplicate this line and then I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and then I wanna change the length of it. So again, I'm gonna unlock it up here so that the width stays the same and I'm just gonna make this like maybe 1.5 and that right here is gonna give us the part where the hangman's gonna stick out but 1.5 is still pretty long so let's shorten it up. Let's go like 0.75 and see if that's a little bit more. Mm, that's a little short. Let's try one. Okay, I think one is pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is get this so that it's lined up with our edge. Now it's hard to see, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a bunch. That way I can see the squares and the lines a little bit better so that I can get it so that it's pretty well lined up to our design. 
Now I do want to do a, another line right here just so that he's got something to like hang from. So I'm just going to duplicate this line again. And for this one, let's make this one 0.75. And I want you to see something because I did forget to unlock it. See how thin it got now compared to the other lines. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this line again because I wanted you to see that. I want to unlock it and then I want to change the height to 0.75. Now you'll note that it should stay the same 0.5 width and it will match. Now that's a little long for where we're putting it. So we can kind of size it down and just figure out about how long we want that little line. I think 0.5 is pretty good. Now you can put a little line down here if you want to. It's really up to you. I'm going to leave that part out of mine because I think I want to give it a little more space for people to write their words because you might want to do like multiple words. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of the squares that I made. So those little lines. I'm going to go down to combine and I'm going to use the unite option. That's like using weld, but I can undo it later if I want to change anything, if I want to move anything, if I want to adjust anything after I'm kind of done putting everything else on here, I can do that. Now I do want to leave a blank space down here at the bottom because this is where you're going to be able to write your lines for your letters and then the guessing letters that are in the right spots. But we need to make a little letter board so that we know what letters we've guessed. So all I'm going to do is, again, I'm just using shapes. I'm going to use shapes pretty much for this whole thing. It's super easy to do this. I'm going to grab a square, and I do want to make it more of a rectangle. So what you can do is unlock it, and that's going to allow us to pull it this way and then pull it this way. Now, we do want to leave some room for our little man to be drawn, so I'm going to reduce the size of that a little bit. And I do kind of want to make it, I think, a little shorter because I want to leave enough room for people to write their information. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. I'm going to bring it back down a little bit. I think that looks like a pretty decent size for what we want to do. Now here's the fun part. We're going to make this into a little outline and it's super easy to do. All I'm going to do is duplicate the square here. I'm going to just reduce the size of this a little bit on each of its sides. So I'm going to unlock this and I'm going to make this like two point, let's go 2.3 for the sides and let's go 4.65 for the top. And let's see how we feel about how that looks. I think that's not quite enough on the top. So I'm going to reduce it down to six, 4.6. That looks pretty good. So now what you want to do is grab both of your squares. I want you to go to a line and I want you to center them. And then we're going to use the slice option. That's going to slice out the center of our square or our rectangle here. And we can delete those. And now you'll see we have a outline. This was just a really easy way to make an outline. If you want to, you can usually find a box in images. But if you don't have design space access, this is a way easier way to do it. So now from here, all we have to do is make the grid to put the letters in. We're going to do seven rows up and down and four across. So again, we're going to use a shape. Like I said, you can do this completely for free because we're just, again, going to use a square. Once it opens our square, we can unlock that square. And I just want to change the width to like point. Let's see how point three looks. That's way too big. So let's try point oh three and see if that's good. I think point oh three is pretty good. Now I'm going to check the height of my square. My height of my square is 4.714. So let's go um, with a height of 4.69 and that'll give us a decent height. We don't want to be the exact height because then we would have to try to line it up exactly with our square. And I don't want to try to do that. That seems hard. Now, um, I will say that I do think that maybe we'll do the vertical lines first. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees and fix the measurements because I just thought about it. I think the horizontal lines are gonna be harder. So we're gonna do the um, other ones first. So now what I wanna do is again, I wanna see how tall this is. So it's 2.43 wide. So let's go with 2.3 wide for this, which is actually technically height. It's very confusing when you rotate because height becomes width and width becomes height. It's crazy. But I think that that should be a decent um, height. We might need to add a little bit to it. So let's change it to like 2.35. We just want it to be able to touch both sides of the um, design without having to like really line them up. Now I need a few of these because I need to make seven rows up and down. So I'm gonna duplicate and I'm just gonna go one at a time. And then that way I can just get everything 
kind of lined up. It's not going to be perfect right now. So now I have two rows. So now this will make three rows. Then I need to make four rows. Then I'm going to make five. And then the last one will make rows six and seven. Now you'll notice that they're really spread out. There's like a lot of space. Totally okay. But what I'm going to do to make this space out easier is I'm going to actually duplicate this one. Line it up with the top. I'm going to duplicate again. And this one I'm going to line it up with the bottom. And we'll delete those. It's just an easier way to get everything to align correctly. So I'm going to select all of my small lines. I'm just holding shift on my keyboard and clicking each of the lines. Then what I want to do is I'm going to go to align and I want to distribute them vertically. And you'll see that it's going to distribute them evenly vertically. So much easier to do it that way than to try to mess with it and like get it all funky. But that's why I put those extra lines in because that will line it up with the box. If I didn't have those lines on there, it would not line up with the box exactly and it would leave us with bigger spaces at the top and the bottom. Now you can obviously get rid of the extra lines, so the top line and the bottom line. Now from here, you can go ahead and if you wanna just save yourself some hassle, go ahead and select everybody right now and I'm gonna go ahead to combine and unite them. That again is just gonna get rid of any of the cut lines. Next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make another line again. Now I could have just duplicated that one, but we'll just use another shape and make a new one. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make this line and again, it's only gonna be um, 0.05 wide. And height wise, we're going to change it to that 4.69 or whatever we had it. I want to say it was 4.69. Now you'll see that that line is as wide as the other lines. Now we need to do four across, but part of it isn't going to go all the way to the top. So it's a little bit different on how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And again, I'm going to put one lined up with the edge here. Then I'm gonna duplicate and I'm gonna make the four lines across, but we're gonna actually shorten two of them, or actually one of them, I guess, because it makes the second um, set of boxes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and then I want one more because I wanna line it up with this right here. Then I wanna select all of those square pieces, those lines. I wanna distribute them horizontally, and that's gonna get them all evened out in the original box. Now I do see that I have some overhang, so what I'm gonna do is go to align and I just wanna align the tops of them and that should take care of anything that's hanging over the side. Now what I'm gonna do is delete these two lines cause I don't need them. And then this line here, I just need to reduce the height of it a little bit. So you'll remember that the height right is up here at the top. So I'm just gonna see what happens if I put it at 0.4 and 0.4 should be perfect. So all I'm gonna do is just pull this back down and we should have a little extra edge here. There we go, that looks more even. Because this part right here isn't gonna house any letters, this is just our letter board, um, and we don't need that many spaces for our letters, so we just need to do A, B, C, D, E, you know, and so on. So now we're ready to do our alphabet, so I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit so that we can really see our text. I'm gonna open up a text box, and all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the same font. I'm just gonna type out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and then I'm just gonna make a couple lines. And the reason I do that is so that it doesn't go off the page, so it's easier to see. Now I'm gonna reduce the size of these right now. Um, that way I'm not having to reduce each and every letter, and all I'm gonna do is hold the letter up to a box and just make sure it looks like it's gonna fit inside the box. I think I wanna go a little smaller. Now I will recommend checking like letters like the W because see how wide that W is? I'm gonna reduce that W so that it fits inside the box because if it doesn't, then it's not gonna work and it's gonna look really funny. So I think that that's gonna fit. It'll be a little bit snug, but I think it'll be fine. So now that I'm happy with that, what I'm gonna do is go to advanced. I'm gonna ungroup to letters, and now what I can do is individually move each letter and put that letter in the box. Now, they some of them might look a little bit small in the box, but it's because certain letters are obviously wider than others. So you're just gonna have to eyeball this part. You're not really gonna be able to center it or anything. 
And I just realized I don't have a D because I fat fingered. So if that happens, it's fine. Just add the text, add the D, and then you can size that down just kind of based on what the other letters look like. So I'm just gonna size that D once it's in the box so I can kind of get it. It won't be perfect, but it's okay. No big deal. Still a little too big, so we will reduce it down a little bit. Now, one thing I will say is once you get to too small, you can't actually get to the bounding boxes. So you can just zoom in so that you can access those bounding boxes. Now, again, you can keep yourself a little bit tighter on this if you want, if it's a little easier for you to see what you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the letters into the boxes. I'm gonna make sure I have all the letters this time. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do to make sure that this cuts correctly. Now, once you have everything laid out, I'll zoom back out a little bit so that you can get a better idea of like what the full design looks like. Again, you can make this however you want. You can add to it. You can do whatever you want. You can add a little thing here, like letter board or whatever. It's up to you. So let's go ahead and just do that for funsies. We'll just add like, maybe we'll do pick a letter. Let's do pick, uh, let's do it all caps. Pick a letter, we'll do it in two lines. And then I'm gonna change the font for it because that's kind of a funny font. Um, I'm just gonna use something simple, nothing too thin, nothing too crazy. Like maybe this one will work. Nope, I hate that font. But we wanna just find like a quick, easy font. Nothing, nothing too crazy. Like this one's probably okay. A little thin, but it might do. You just play around with find a font that want, works. I'm gonna find a font really quick and that way we can finish this off. Now that I found a font that I liked, I'm gonna go ahead and line space it a little bit. I'm gonna just go like negative five and see what that does. Line spacing's up here at the top and I can play with that or I can always ungroup to lines. But a lot of times just using line spacing is pretty easy. Usually you need to do a pretty high number to get it to be fairly close together. But I think that's pretty close. And then I'm just gonna size it down and see how it looks in our little hole here for it. Oh, I think that looks pretty good. All right, I think that works. I think we're done with it. So once you're happy with your design, the first thing that I want you to do is hide the um, square that we used as a template because that's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt to work with. It's gonna be in the way, it's just gonna be annoying. Now I did forget to unite the lines that make up the center parts, so our um, horizontal lines. So I'm gonna select those really quick and select that unite area right here. And I'm gonna combine them and unite them again because I forgot that. And I wanna make sure that all of those pieces are gonna cut as one piece and not have any like cut lines in them. Um, if, if you forget to do that, it's okay. Just do it on your next step. It will be just fine. Now, once I've done that, all I wanna do is I'm gonna select my entire design and I want to use attach. What attach does is it holds everything in place. If I didn't hit attach, it would be a really big mess. I can actually show you. Let me detach it really quick. And I'm gonna save it just in case the design decides to like go crazy when I hit make it. Um, Cause there is quite a bit of information here and design space sometimes doesn't like that. So if I didn't attach it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna look really nutty when you go to make it and it's probably gonna frustrate the heck out of you. So attaching is super important because now you'll see all my letters are not where they need to be. My little designs are not where they need to be. It's just really messy. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna hit cancel really quick here. And I wanna attach everything because that's gonna tell Design Space to hold everything in place where I have it already set up on this design. So what I wanna do is down at the bottom, I make sure I selected my whole design and I'm just clicking attach. Then I'm gonna go ahead and click make it and you're gonna see what a big difference that's gonna make because it's gonna have everything in place where it should be. So now you can see that our hangman board is exactly as I had it laid out previously on our design. Now, for me personally, I like to put this kind of stuff on the back of the board because when you're using the dry erase marker, it can sometimes catch on the edges of the letters. It can either pull the letters up or you can ruin your marker. So what you'll wanna do is mirror your design. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna cut it backwards so that we're gonna be able to place the design on the back of the acrylic. It's just gonna make it last longer, work better. It's just an easier way to do it. 
So now we're ready to cut this out. We're gonna cut this with StarCraft HD, which is gonna work great for these fine details. I love StarCraft HD for this. It's so much easier to work with. And this just cuts on the regular vinyl setting. Now I do see, as I'm looking at this, this C looks a little far over. So I'm gonna go back and adjust that just because I don't like where that's sitting. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead, take you over to the machine and get everything cut out. We're ready to cut out the vinyl for our design. So I've just loaded some white vinyl onto my mat. Again, I'm cutting this on StarCraft HD on the vinyl setting. This is our acrylic sheet. It has a protective layer on it so that it doesn't get scratched while it's shipping or in its box. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel the back off of the one side. Now your backing might look different, your protective coating, it might be white, it might be blue, it might be clear, but just know that 99% of acrylic is going to come with some sort of a coating on it. And this one apparently just wants to rip. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this off of the side we're going to be placing our decal on. I'm gonna place the decal and show you how it looks. Now that I've got the backing off, we're gonna use some medium tack transfer tape. I get this from 143 Vinyl. You can grab it at their website, which I will link everything we're using for this project down below. And just know that if you shop through my links that it doesn't cost you guys any extra money at all. Um, it just does help me continue to make these YouTube videos for you for free. So I do ask and do appreciate if you shop through the links that I share. Now what we're gonna need to do is squeegee this from the back, but I do wanna point out one thing really quick. Do you see right here where it looks like it cut a little deep? That's because it did. So there was a little bit of debris on my mat that I didn't notice, which raised this piece of vinyl up a little bit, making it so that it cut through. Not a big deal, we'll be able to still use it. It's still completely usable. We'll just need to be a little careful right in that general area. So what I'm doing is burnishing my vinyl from the back and then all I'm gonna do is peel the backing away and I'm just gonna make sure I'm really careful around, and I believe that's the letter B. So I'm just gonna be extra careful when we get to the B just to make sure that everything stays down. Now one thing I want you to note is that these letters are pretty small. So I am using a really sharp angle to peel back our transfer tape. And I'm just making sure that all these really little letters right here where it says pick a letter are staying down um, because those are very, very thin, very tiny letters with a lot of little detail. So now I'm gonna come back through and you can see where the B is. No big deal, came off just fine. So we're just gonna very gently peel back our backing for the entire design. And now your design is gonna look like it's facing the correct way because technically it is right now, but this is the adhesive side. So what we're gonna do is place our acrylic down onto this and it's gonna be really fun. Oh no, our W ripped, no big deal, it happens. I wasn't paying attention, that was my fault. So what I'm gonna do is just push that back down and it should be fine, no big deal. You can always recut the W if you want to, but honestly, you can't even tell it ripped. Now, you have a couple options for how you can do this. You can either take your acrylic and lay it on top of your vinyl if you wanna peel the other side off, or you can flip it this way and lay your vinyl down like you would traditionally, which is how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna go ahead, and I'm actually gonna bring this backing back over for just a moment because I wanna use part of it to help me line this up. So you can use the backing or I'm gonna show you another really helpful trick, especially when you're working with something like acrylic, using a piece of parchment paper with your vinyl is super helpful. So what I'm gonna do is lay my vinyl down and I'm just gonna leave a little bit up off of the um, edge of my vinyl and I wanna line this up and this is gonna help me make sure that I get it straight even, I leave enough space for things, you know, all the important stuff when it comes to placing a vinyl decal. So I just wanna get this hangman pretty close to the top 
and I want to get it well lined up where I think it looks good. I want to make sure that I've got space on either side here and then I want to make sure I've got some space on the bottom. Everything looks good. So what I'm going to do is press down this edge where I've left a little space from where the parchment paper is. And then I'm going to take the parchment paper and I'm going to take it out from behind my vinyl. Then all I'm going to do is take my vinyl and lay it down. And I'm just going to use my squeegee to help press it down all the way down the acrylic. Then I want to go ahead and give it a really good burnish, but you want to be careful not to burnish on the back there. You don't want to scratch it if you don't have to. And I just want to make sure that I'm going to pay special attention. And I realized just now that I lost the L. He might still be on the backing. He is, so we can replace him. I'm not worried. It's right here. I'm going to go ahead and put that L back down. I don't know how I missed that. But again, if you run into something like that, there's always ways to fix it. You can recut just that letter. You can try to find it left behind and replace it. Lots of options. Don't panic if you lose something or something happens, it's easy to fix. So now I'm going to go ahead and peel back my transfer tape. Now again, just like I did with the backing, I peel that transfer tape at a super sharp angle. And I want to make sure that everything stays stuck down. So I'm just gently peeling this back and everything looks like it's staying really, really well. It looks like everything is nice and adhered. That's one thing that's great with acrylic. It adheres to vinyl really, really well. Now again, take your time going over these little letters here. And then right at the very end, I'm just gonna make sure I take my time right here on the word hangman. Perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little piece of this transfer tape. I don't need a big piece. I'm literally just taking a very small edge where it's not like super curled or anything. And I'm going to grab that L that was left behind on our backing. I'm going to use my finger and I'm going to get him off of there. And then all I'm going to do is line him back up onto our design. Now if he's not perfect, it's fine. Not the end of the world. That wasn't even close. It's hard to see because I didn't leave enough edge to really see what I was doing, but it's all right. We'll get him on there. He'll look okay. That's pretty good. I think that's fine. It's not perfect, but it's okay. No big deals for kids anyway, so I'm not really worried about it being absolutely perfect. So now you've got your design on the back. What I want you to do now is we can flip it over and we can peel off the backing on this side now. And you're going to have this really fun hangman board. And these make great like stocking stuffers. These are great gifts for like grandkids and stuff, especially if they're pe people who travel, fly, camp, all those things. This is just a great little thing they can stick in their bag. It's super flat. All you need is a dry erase board and this will keep everybody busy for a long time. What's great is adults play hangman too. You can use more adult words, longer words, you know, it, this is a game that's great for all age groups. So now you have your hangman board. So let's play a quick game of hangman. I wanted to show you how the game works and everything. So all you have to do is use a dry erase marker. And what's great about this is it's so simple because you can easily erase anything, totally reusable, and it's so simple to do this. So obviously it's happy crafting. So I'm gonna just say, oh, I'm gonna guess a Y. So I cross that out and I guess a O and we're gonna give our guy another arm. And then I'm going to say A, so I'm going to cross that out, and we have happy, and then we have an A. I know that looks terrible, but you get the idea. This is a pretty easy thing to do, to play, and it's super simple. You can take this in the car with you. You can take this on an airplane, and all you have to take with you is a little, maybe even a napkin will work or a little tissue to dry it, to like wipe this off when you want to redo it, and then a dry erase marker and the little board. So it's really easy to travel with, super simple. Put this in a little bag, whatever you got, put them together. And then honestly, you just wipe it clean and you're good to go for your next round. And you can see how easy this comes off. It's all gone and it was just a wipe of my finger. And voila, you have a brand new clean board ready to use again to play your game. I hope you guys had fun learning how to make your own little travel game. If you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comments. Let me know what game you liked to play on your travels. I am a definitely a hangman gal. I always liked it. It was fun to learn how to spell that way. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting.